In this med mastery lesson, you will learn how to perform a good musculoskeletal examination. But keep in mind that in rheumatology, a full physical examination is just as important as a good musculoskeletal exam because many of the inflammatory arthritis conditions can cause problems outside of the joints. For example, skin rashes, nodules, ulcers in the mouth or hair loss, which can help you diagnose the patient. The components of a musculoskeletal physical examination include inspection, palpation, evaluation of range of motion, and special tests. In this lesson, you will learn about the first three, and we will cover special physical examination tests that can help diagnose several different types of arthritis and periarticular pathologies in a future lesson. During general inspection, pay attention to how the patient looks. If they are in distress due to pain, look at their posture. They may be guarding a joint or holding it with their hands. Check their gait to see if they are limping or have other types of abnormal walking. When inspecting the affected joint, don't ignore the periarticular tissues where you can pick up clues for conditions such as cellulitis, tendonitis, bursitis, muscle atrophy, and nail disease. It is always helpful to compare the joint with the contralateral one. Check for deformity, redness, or swelling. In osteoarthritis, the bony enlargement of the distal and proximal interphalangeal joints is very characteristic. The prominence and squaring of the first carpometacarpal joint is also easily recognized. In rheumatoid arthritis, you can look for swung neck deformities, where the distal interphalangeal joint is hyperflexed and the proximal interphalangeal joint is hyperextended. Or you might see boutonniere deformities, where the proximal interphalangeal joint is hyperflex and the distal interphalangeal joint is hyperextended. Fun fact, the word boutonniere comes from the French word for buttonhole because this deformity resembles the way fingers look when trying to button up a shirt. AC deformity of the thumbs and ulnar deviation of the metacarpophalangeal joints are also typical of rheumatoid arthritis. In psoriatic arthritis, you can find nail dystrophy and sausage digits, also called dactylitis, where there is diffuse swelling in one finger or toe. During palpation, you want to assess for tenderness over the joint lines, which is where the two bones meet. To palpate the small joints of the hands and wrists, the examiner needs to use both their thumbs and index fingers and apply enough pressure in an intermittent fashion to cause a little blanching of the overlying skin. If the patient is not tender over the joint lines or is tender all over, including the periarticular areas, then think of other non-arthritic etiologies of pain such as tendonitis, bursitis, or fibromyalgia. When palpating a joint, you also want to assess for swelling and increased warmth. If you notice any bogginess, excess soft tissue, warmth, or have difficulty filling the joint lines, then most likely that joint is inflamed or swollen. Sometimes it is difficult to assess joint swelling in patients with higher body weight or those with allodynia, where a patient feels pain from a non-painful stimulus. And again, comparing the joint with the contralateral side can be very helpful. A swollen knee is easy to recognize with a special technique. Have the patient lie down on the stretcher or bed with the affected knee in external rotation. Due to gravity, the fluid inside the joint will fall onto the lateral aspect of the knee. Apply additional pressure on the medial aspect of the knee to push that fluid farther to the other side and then push the fluid back from the lateral side as shown here with the thumb. You should notice a ballooning of the knee with this maneuver. In the evaluation of range of motion, 
you want to assess both active and passive movement. In active movement, you ask the patient to move their joint by themselves. For example, flex the shoulder, extend it, adduct it, and adduct it. In passive range of motion, the examiner moves the joint for the patient. If active range of motion causes pain, the etiology is usually periarticular, like tendonitis. If passive range of motion causes pain, the etiology is typically intraarticular within the joint. In the shoulder, if range of motion is severely limited in both active and passive tests, adhesive capsulitis or frozen shoulder, as it is more commonly called, is high in the differential diagnosis. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.